all right, all right, all right. We're going to learn today. Learn today. Learn today. Learn today. This class series in Practical Mind Science, dealing specifically with visualization, how to use your God-given power of visualization to be, to do, and to have what you want. Visualization is one of the most effective techniques of being, doing, and having the good that you desire. We've had wonderful experience with it over the years, and we've had people who've had spectacular results with visualization, and so I wanted to teach this again in this series. In every session, we want to begin with reviewing the definition of visualization, and let us recapitulate the definition for visualization. It's always good to have a clear idea in your mind exactly what we're talking about. Visualization is seeing and feeling yourself in your own mind already being, doing, and having the good you desire. That's very interesting, and I would like for you to underline the word already. It's a very interesting thing about the subconscious mind that I mentioned from time to time. In the subconscious, there is no time element such as past tense or future tense. In the subconscious mind, it is always now. Always now. And whatever you see in your mind, whatever you feel in your mind, the subconscious mind deals with it as a present reality and proceeds to bring it about, to express it on the objective plane of life. And if you're going to be very good at visualization, you must get to that point and you must practice in your own mind, seeing and feeling yourself already being what you want to be, already doing what you want to do, already having what you want to have. I have been giving you an example of visualization from somebody from Atlanta from years back. I remember the name of Mrs. Hines from Atlanta, told about how she sat down between 1 and 2 o'clock one morning, and she was writing me a letter about the type of house she wanted, and she said, I saw it in my head. And she wrote that letter to me about the kind of house she wanted between 1 and 2 in the morning, sealed it up, was going to drop it in the mail that morning on her way to work. Before she could get out to work that morning, her doorbell rang. It was a friend of hers who said, oh, child, I just finished my real estate course, and I just got my real estate license, and I've got just the house you want. She said, come on and let's go and see it. And so they got in their respective cars and went out to see the house. And the, the husband, you know, that early in the morning was wondering what are these girls going out so early for? And he got in his truck and followed them. But Mrs. Hines said, when we got to that house and I saw the outside of that house, it was exactly the house that I'd seen in my head between 1 and 2 a.m. that morning. Not only that, she said, when I went inside the house and looked around, it was exactly the house that I had seen in my head between 1 and 2 that morning while she was writing me that letter describing. Now, that is a good example. There are some terms mentioned here in subconscious correlation, vibratory affinity. I'll mention this much about it at this point. Subconscious correlation has to do with the detail that the subconscious mind takes care of in bringing about what you visualize. And subconscious correlation is what happens when Mrs. Hines sat there between 1 and 2 a.m. in the morning in her head, in her mind, seeing the kind of house she wanted, it was subconsciously correlated, all of the details, and before she could get out of her house the next morning, 
the subconscious mind had everything worked out so that she was led to that house. This was a dramatic instance. Sometimes it takes a longer time, and sometimes it happens so fast that people say it makes their head swim. We had a lady who was here with us. She told us she had visualized a house that she wanted on Friday night, and she visualized it down to the fact that she wanted a clothesline with all that money she had demonstrated, and so on. I wondered why she was still hanging out her clothes. But I read the transcript again, and I found out. She says she likes to smell sheets on the line. See, you have to look for these clues. And she said she visualized the house that she wanted. She saw the clothes blowing on the line. She could smell the sheets, like she likes to smell them, you know, laundered sheets. And on Friday night, she visualized the house she wanted. She visualized the details. In her mind, she what? Already had it. And you remember also that in a previous lesson, I told you that you're to use all of your senses in visualizing, all of your esoteric senses, right? What do you do? You see it, you feel it, you smell it, you touch it, and you involve your sense of taste as well. Well, she saw the clothes blowing on the line just like she wanted it, saw the house. And the next day, she and her husband found the house. As a matter of fact, her husband found the house and came and told her, hey, I found the house that you would want. And it was exactly as she visualized it. Subconscious correlation. Say that with me. Subconscious correlation. It indicates that the subconscious mind knows how to correlate all of the necessary details regarding what you visualize and to bring it to pass. So then visualization is seeing and feeling yourself in your own mind already being, doing, and having the good that you desire. Practice this. Now, you may come here and hear me teach the theory. You may read it in a book, and all of that is fine. But you know, one of the differences in this ministry is that we don't just give theory. We believe in practice. And of course, I keep telling you, and it cannot be repeated too often, one of the best times to repeat this is before going to sleep at night. And I'm not going to say one of the best times. I'm going to say that is the single best time. Why? Because when you visualize, you are on the transliminal level of mind, and you go to sleep, and the objective mind or the reasoning mind or the intellect does not have a chance to talk you out of it. And some of you know what I'm talking about. It seems like there's two things talking on the inside of you. You say what you want, and then reason comes to you and say, hey, no, you can't do that. How many experience that? Mm -hmm. But remember, when you're visualizing, you're not reasoning. As I said, your imagination cannot reason, and your reason has no imagination. So it means when you visualize, you move out of the intellectual area of mind altogether. I'm just going to read a definition of subconscious correlation, and I'm going to give this to you officially in another class. Subconscious correlation, the affinity between a thought and its thing, the inevitable action of the subconscious whereby it finds, draws, and brings together all necessary mental and material components necessary to the fulfillment of any idea or conviction of the mind. Where Knight said that, don't look at me. Every idea will always find what belongs to it. Every belief will always find what belongs to it. Every vision will subconsciously find what belongs to it. Visualize success, and it is inevitable that all of the necessary mental and material components will be brought together to bring it to pass. Another part of the definition for visualization. Visualization is deliberate, positive, creative dreaming of things into expression. So in your visualizing, you have to be deliberate. In other words, it indicates that you've got to choose what you're going to visualize. You decide what you want to visualize. Use your visual faculty, but do not be used by it. You must control your imagination. Never permit your imagination to control you. Remember that now. Even when we go through the visualization process and you get caught up in it, be sure that you are in control because 
As I said before also, people are always visualizing and there's too much negative visualization. An example of negative visualization is that song, they call it a spiritual, but it's really a blues. And it's that song, nobody knows the trouble I see. See what you're doing? What are you seeing? And what's the law of mind? What you see, what you get. And then folks said, I don't know why I have to cry sometimes. Well, you said nobody knows the trouble I see. You see, you are dreaming trouble into existence. You are envisioning trouble for yourself. I want to repeat this again because this is so important. You must control your imagination because, again, another way of defining visualization is using the imagination consciously and willfully to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do, and to have what you want to have. In life, you must use or be you. In the mental aspect of life, it is the same thing. Use or be you. God has given you these faculties, and you must use your imagination or somebody else will use it. The television will flash on just what a headache looks like. And then six months later, when you get an excedrine headache, you swear you never thought it up. The television shows you exactly what, a, what an upset stomach looks like. I remember one from years ago, and you cross it out as it gets to you. Showed a picture of this upset stomach, but it was just carrying on. And the stomach was talking, and the stomach said, I told him not to send any more of that stuff down here. Evidently, the guy was drinking too much and eating too much. Stomach was just throwing it back up. And then, of course, there was this kind of medicine that you would take that would settle it right down. The media, the world, is constantly trying to use your imagination. The world is constantly trying to use your mind. And let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it, your mind is going to be used. The only question is, who is going to use my mind? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that question. Let's say it together. Come on. Who is going to use my mind? That's the question. Your mind is going to be you. Your imagination is going to be you. Who's going to use it? I am going to use my mind together. I am going to use my mind. And you see, you must use it deliberately. You must use it positively. You must use it in ways that are creative of the good you desire. When you're using your mind, when you're using your imagination, and on a daily basis, Whenever you think, the good question to ask yourself, is this thought creative of the good that I desire? Getting back to that so-called spiritual, it's really a blues. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Ask yourself the question, now, does this create the good that I want? And any thought, mood, attitude, idea, vision, or imagination that does not create the good that you desire, cut it off must message on forgiveness for a moment. An unforgiving, hateful, hurting state of mind is not creative of good, is it? It creates more of the same. Remember that every state of mind creates its own likeness. This is the true meaning that God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. Somebody thinks the theologians tell us that this is something that happened centuries ago. Uh, uh more than that. You are constantly creating your world, the manifestations in your world, after your own image and likeness, after the image and likeness in your own mind. And there in the first chapter of Genesis, where it uses the word image, it has to do with imagination. And man means what? Manifestation. God is consciousness. Your consciousness is always creating the images that are in it. After its likeness, creation as such is not finished. Creation is continual. God consciousness is continually creating your world through you. Every man creates his own world. The hundreds of you sitting here tonight, side by side, each really is living in his own world. 
And how is your world created? After the image and likeness that's in your own mind. And visualization correctly understood teaches us how to control the images and the likenesses in our mind. How to decide them, how to choose them. How to use our imagination instead of being used by it and instead of letting the world use our imagination. Don't ever let anybody else tell you what you can or cannot be and do and have. Don't do it. We are continuing to talk about specifically the mind's eye. And the first thing that we're going to do is to review definitions. I'm a great believer in being cognizant of the definition of what you're talking about. This whole series is about visualization. So again, let's address ourselves to the meaning of the term visualization. Visualization is seeing and feeling yourself in your own mind, already being, doing, and having the good that you desire. Visualization is deliberate, positive, creative dreaming of things into expression. Visualization is using the imagination consciously and willfully to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do, and to have what you want to have. Let's talk about the mind's eye, and let's review the definition for the mind's eye from the last session. When we talk about the mind's eye or the eye of the mind, we mean the esoteric visional faculty of God in man, which sees mental images into manifestation. The eye of the mind is God in creative action through the imagination of man. I like that. And I want you to say to yourselves, God creates through my imagination. Come on. God creates through my imagination. Remember that. It's good to know that. God creates. Through my imagination. Say that again. That brings us specifically to this session's lesson titled, In My Mind's Eye. And there's a verse of scripture here from Romans, the fourth chapter, and the 17th verse. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which are not as though they were. I want you to pay particular attention to the word, calls those things which be not as though they were. Because here is the key to what imagination does. Here is the key to what visualization does. When you deliberately visualize something, you are calling those things which are not materially as though they were. And that is a creative action of God. Referring again to a recent testimony here about visualization. You remember the lady said that she went to custom order her new Lincoln Continental, and she told the man the color combinations that she wanted and the colors of the upholstery and various other features. And the man said to her, that's not in the book. To which she replied, what? But it's in my mind. So what was she doing? calling those things which were not as though they were. And this is a very important point to remember about the modus operandi of visualization, the modus operandi of imagination. I was reviewing the tapes from the last videotaping, and I heard Mrs. Jackson testifying about how she visualized 
going on that trip to Los Angeles with me, and she saw herself in Los Angeles. She just visualized the trip. What was she doing? Calling those things which were not as though they were. And in a few days, somebody that she had worked for years ago wrote her a letter from Los Angeles and sent her $1,500. What you see is what you get. A visualization is one of the most amazing techniques that you can use to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do, and to have what you want to have. And I suggest to you that you practice it until you really master it. After a while, you will be able to actually see yourself seeing things into existence, creating things by your imagination. And you will learn how to consciously and deliberately see things and speak things into existence. But it takes practice. And may I suggest to you also that the art of visualization is a skill to be developed. I want to say this again and have you write it and repeat it after me. Visualization is a skill to be practiced and developed. Together, visualization is a skill to be practiced and developed. Here again is one of the differences in this teaching and in this philosophy. You must practice. I can tell you, other people can tell you, but nobody can do your doing for you. Nobody can do my doing for me. Together, nobody can do my doing for me. I can pray for you, but I can't do your praying for you. I'm recommending to you again one of the best writers on the subject of visualization that I know of is Neville. Ask for anything by Neville, particularly resurrection. Get that book and never stop reading it. And we have had people to use visualization that had never been exposed to it before, and I mean they just got immediate results. One of the things you have to be careful about in visualization is not to have any stress or strain about it. Visualization should be done with effortless effort. How should it be done? With effortless effort. It should always be pleasurable. There should be no force about it whatsoever. The visualization treatments that we've practiced together here in these classes have really been wonderful, so much so at the end that I just get carried away. And really I drag my feet on coming back because I usually end up out on a beach. And you know, the vision goes before you, and it will come again and receive you unto itself, so that where I am, there you may be also. That particular verse of Scripture means that when you visualize something, you send your messenger before you. The vibrations of your visualization goes throughout the universe. The vibrations of your visualization go throughout the universe and brings shape and form to what you visualize and leads you across a bridge of incident to the materialization of whatever you visualize. And many times it happens in strange ways, like the lady who visualized the trip to Los Angeles and an employer from years ago, just out of the blue, sent her the money. You know, your vibrations are always drawing things to you anyway. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It means whatever idea, whatever belief, whatever feeling, whatever vision I lift up and believe in in my mind will draw all corresponding manifestations unto me. Everything necessary for the materialization of your vision will be drawn to you in ways that you cannot and need not consciously devise. I want to repeat that. Whatever you visualize will be brought into your experience in ways which you cannot and need not devise. Part of it is from a quotation from Neville. Whatever you visualize, I maybe I haven't told you so much about my favorite books. Next to the Bible, that is my favorite book. 
That's saying a lot. If you ever master visualization, you've got it. Whatever you visualize will materialize in ways which you cannot and need not consciously devise. And it is well that I dwell on this again and again because I don't want you to think that you are responsible to force things into existence, uh, to force what you visualize. Every good desire has its own mechanics, its own modus operandi of materialization. And it, it may help you to know this. Every good desire that God ever gives you has its own built-in modus operandi, its own built-in power of fulfillment. Why? Let me hear you say, power of fulfillment. So you remember this about your visualization. All of your good imagination, all of your good visualization has its own built-in power of fulfillment. Every good desire that you ever have had, do have, and ever will have is given to you by God in you. Remember that. God is the origin of my every good desire. Together? God is the power of fulfillment of my every good desire. Remember that. Now, what are you going to do if you want some good? The answer comes, see yourself with it in your mind's eye. When you see yourself with it and feel it in your bones, you'll get it. You must see it and feel it. And if you can see it and feel it, you'll get it. And this works for everything, including money. Back to the lady who was afraid of driving. She overcame that fear, and she got a brand new car by using the process of visualization, by using the eye of her mind. With the eye of her mind, she saw herself driving, turning the wheel, looking in the rearview mirror. You know, can't, can't you feel the reality of her vision? You see, you must put reality in it. And notice how things happened while she was eating lunch, listening to the radio. An announcement came on the radio, specifically for those of you who would like to drive, but you are afraid. All of these things come together if you keep imagining it. And she was wondering, well, then if I do learn how to drive, how am I going to get the money? She learned to drive, and her husband gave her a brand new car. Let me hear you say, it works. <laughs> And again, I want to repeat, when you really start practicing visualization, you get to that point where you can catch it happening. And you'll get to the point where you can see it and speak it, and it just happens immediately, right at the same time. Another very interesting thing about visualization, visualization really leads all of the other senses. You see, you see it, and then that helps you to feel it. That helps you to smell it. That helps you to taste it. For example, when we do our visualization, I go to the beach and we order those drinks, I taste them. I smell those flowers. Now, I believe that when an impression reaches the subconscious mind, it is actually impressed upon the subconscious mind by feeling. I believe that all subconscious impressions is translated in the latter end into feeling. But again, the visional faculty leads all of the other esoteric senses. And when you see it, you can feel it better. You can smell it better. You can taste it better. And the lady said that while she was visualizing for that car, she went around the house. Just like I told you, I used to go down the road pushing a dead branch off of a tree, walking four miles to school and back with my mother, just driving it. Ooh. All right. That gets into also what I call the power of fascination. 
What fascinates you? What do you love? It must fascinate you and you must love it until you can see it. I've had a lifelong love affair with automobiles and they just keep coming to me. My garage is runneth over. I have a love and a fascination for clothing and they just crawl right up on my back. What fascinates me? Several of the news reporters are telling me about the fascination of people with negative news, with bad news. And that's what creates more bad news. Be careful. Do not indulge in a negative fascination. Become fascinated with good and visualize that good. See that good in your mind's eye. Money has always been a great fascination to me, and I'll tell you that. I'm fascinated by it. It's, con it's so convenient, isn't it? And I don't care what the religious folks say about it. Money is nice. <laughs> like one man said, he said, I've been poor and I've been rich. And he said, and I can tell you from experience, rich is better. Thank you for watching this video, my friends. I hope you really enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a comment below and please subscribe to this channel. I want to give you so much more. Thank you and I'll see you next time.